very meaning of biodiversity means life on Earth. When we talk about preserving the world we live in, the immediate reaction is to talk about the effects of climate change. We suggest sustainable solutions like planting trees or installing wind power farms. But did you know that wind turbines in the United States kill over 500,000 birds every year? Or that you could endanger an entire ecosystem if you plant a non-native tree? If something as small as an earthworm has the capability of affecting our entire food system, just imagine all the scenarios that could happen if we are unable to prioritize preserving these precious ecosystems. We need to make the connection that preserving biodiversity and climate change should be discussed together. The solutions have to be both climate positive and nature positive. It can't be one or the other. But where do we start? Trees are a crucial component to capturing and storing carbon. The process of planting trees to be used as carbon sinks is an important component to simultaneously preserve biodiversity and fight against climate change. This dynamic also plays into discussions related to green infrastructure and even urban city planning. When discussing the future of cities, biodiversity is often the first concern. Well, why should we not plan cities with both biodiversity and climate change in mind? Making city spaces greener helps fight the phenomenon known as heat islands. According to the EPA's definition, heat islands are urbanized zones that experience higher temperatures than outlying areas. Urban infrastructure is more naturally inclined to absorb heat, which is why vegetation and trees are so crucial in the discussion to fight climate change. Shaded areas can have the potential of being 20 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than unshaded ones. When roofs or the side of buildings are strategically built, incorporating greenery in its plans, this makes a big difference in the warming of the natural environment. Trees and vegetation not only help sequester carbon dioxide, but they manage stormwater, reduce pollution, and provide an improvement for the quality of life of the individual citizens living in the city. In the United States, many regions suffer from climate change-induced natural disasters. One big one is coastal flooding in Florida. Using nature in this case will be an advantage to mitigating the disastrous results that come about from these recurring floods. Mangroves, an important part of the local Floridian ecosystem, are crucial in the next steps for fighting against the climate change disasters. A study coming out of the Nature Conservancy concluded that mangroves in Florida prevented 1.5 billion in flood damages. The study also concluded that mangroves protected over half a million people during Hurricane Irma in 2017, with damages being reduced by nearly 25% in counties that had mangroves. But the issue is that as human development continues to expand, the mangroves will have no place to grow. When we clear that space for our own gain, we need to understand the repercussions. Between 2000 and 2015, mangrove destruction released 122 million tons of carbon. To put it into perspective, this is two and a half times the amount released by California wildfires between 2001 and 2010. Knowing how important mangroves are to not only the ecosystem they thrive in, but to our very humanity, we must have a very real conversation about destroying them, just so that people can have a nice waterfront view. From a policy standpoint, this shift to understanding the connection between biodiversity and climate has only recently started to translate into action. One of the bigger developments has come out of Europe, the European Commission in their all-encompassing Green New Deal incorporated a biodiversity strategy that aims to place Europe on a path to recovering their biodiversity by 2030. A large part of this strategy is to launch an EU nature restoration plan. It seeks to restore degraded ecosystems while prioritizing climate change in the process by targeting ecosystems with the potential of capturing and storing carbon as well as those that can help reduce the impact of natural disasters on their immediate surroundings. 
Progress is being made, slowly but surely. The transatlantic relationship has a crucial role in helping push and fast-track this kind of climate action. Together, they will bring about change that will change our environment for the better. At the end of the day, the fight against climate change will have been all for nothing if we eradicate the very nature we claim we're protecting in the process. Fighting biodiversity and climate change in tandem must be the gold standard going forward.